As you're probably well aware, there is a recent addition of Italian and French aircraft in the game. This poses one simple question. Are these machines worth your time? Or, in other words, did these nations have interesting planes that could give hell to legendary Messerschmitts, Zeros, LAs, Spitfires and Thunderbolts? Let's answer that question with a bit of history. It was the French who showed the world that planes could be produced en masse. During World War I, more than half of all planes that were operated anywhere in the world were built by the French. In the years prior to WW2, bureaucracy and corruption almost ruined the industry. But all the hardships didn't prevent French aircraft designers from creating a wide array of designs that don't fail to impress even today. Just take the works of Émile Doitin alone. This cunning businessman stands behind both the almost flawless D-37 parasol monoplane and the incredibly fast D-500, as well as the more dangerous version of the latter, the fearsome D-501, armed with a 20mm engine cannon. Not enough? Okay. There was also a guy called Marcel Dassault, ni Bloch, who was thrown into Buchenwald for refusing to work with the Nazis. Not only did he survive one of the most terrifying death camps of the war, he also continued to make new, exciting aircraft and lived to the grand old age of 94. Take a look at his MB-157, a true predator and a real beauty. Then there is the MD-450 Ouragan, the first jet-powered French-designed combat aircraft to enter production. Looks great, doesn't it? What about the planes made at SNC-ASO? For example, the incredible SO-8000 Narval, it only takes one look to know that this twin-boom pusher configuration design is no ordinary bird. The Sud Aviation Vautour, another one of their creations, simply exists in a class of its own. Without a load of bombs and rockets, it has the best rate of climb in the game. And great guns to boot. If, at this point, you think that French aircraft makers are badass, which is absolutely right, wait till you hear about the Italian ones. Just think of it. Prior to World War II, it was Italy that had the best aeronautical engineers in the whole world. Take Mario Castoldi, for instance. In 1940, he was considered the best aerodynamics expert on the planet. And rightly so. He was the man who designed the famous Mackie MC-72 that set a world speed record for piston engine powered seaplanes, which, by the way, still stands. He also built a whole family of well-known WW2 fighters, including the excellent Folgore and Veltro, and designed the amazing MC-207 which was meant to outperform the best piston-engine-powered aircraft of both the Axis and the Allies. What about Giuseppe Gabrielli? He designed the Fiat G55 that was regarded as the best single-engine, single-seat Axis fighter. No easy task when you have to compete with German and Japanese aircraft makers. After the war, this restless Sicilian also went on to design the miracle that went by the name of the G-91. Just think about it. This jet fighter entered into service in the 60s, but retired only in 1995. Of course, you can't have this discussion without at least mentioning Sergio Stefanuti. This talented engineer made the SAI-403, which was powered with a 750-horsepower engine, 
but flew as well as the damn BF 109G2. Then we have Roberto Longhi and Antonio Alessi, who created a family of excellent Reggiane monoplane fighters and numerous others. What that means is that you can be 100% sure that Italians have a great fleet of iconic machines with even more legendary planes coming your way a little bit later. The last thing, while we are here, the Italians recently got a couple of tanks as well. This is just a start, of course, but it's really good news. After all, Italy was the first to use armored vehicles in the theater of conflict. They did it in 1912. Mixed battles, here we come. 